Hello and welcome back to the When You're Podcast, the podcast for when you're doing anything. Today we're talking about when you're watching Bridgerton Season 2. I really have to say something about this season. It was so... It was a really nice change of pace from the first one. Because the first one was like... Yes, there was tension, there was love, there was romance, and then there was passionate, heated, physical, scintillating, scorching hot, passionate, and just full-on, hard, intimate moments. It had a lot of good intimate moments. And in the second one, it felt like there was a lot more build-up. The second one, this second season, there was so much more emotion. There was a lot more, um, there was definitely a lot more waiting. Obviously, in the last one, there was a little bit of waiting. It was kind of like back and forth. Will they? Won't they? They end up getting together. But in this, in this one, it's like, it's a... It's a a forbidden love, if you will. And spoilers for season two. If you haven't watched season two, you got to go watch it. Now, this one focuses around Anthony or Anthony Bridgerton and the new and upcoming diamond of the of the season or whatever, which is none other than Edwina. Now, I like Edwina, not just because we share similar names of sorts, but because she seems naturally kind and she's she's she she has great qualities, don't get me wrong. But her older sister Kate, and I recognize her from the the other show, Sex Education that she was on. I I, I also liked her in that. But in this one, I mean, she really gets to show off. This one I think they really used her full range of uh, her acting capabilities. And the whole season is centered around her, uh, who, whose name is Kate, and Anthony in this uh, enemies to lovers kind of a situation that they, go, they got going on. And I have to tell you, it's so good. It's It's really, really... They have so many good uh, moments with each other. They have so much emotions build up over time. And then over that time, you're kind of like, just get together. You know, like, you're like, can we just, can we just get to it? Can we just, can we not drag this on for so long? But if they didn't drag it out for so long, it wouldn't feel so beautiful when they finally get together. You know what I'm saying? I think... Because they kept, you know, they kept you like on a, on a leash. You're like, they were, they're about to, they're about to, but they don't. They're, they're so close. They don't wait for it. And it's not coming yet. And then all of a sudden it comes through and you're just like, yes, finally, all the passion, all the buildup, you know, that, that really happens between the two of them. And it makes so much sense for the both of them. Uh, when I first started watching season two, like I, I watched it after season one. Well, not right away. Maybe right away. I'm trying to think. Uh, I think, okay, maybe it was like the next day or whatever. I, I think I was really interested to see where the story was going to go. At first, I, I was kind of like, I was kind of hoping it was going to be more of the Duke and uh, his wife. I, I, man, why did I forget her name? I know the actress's name. It's Phoebe something. I thought it was going to be like them kind of a story mixed in with when how they used uh, the old days. But it wasn't like that at all. It was uh, definitely a new story with new characters and everything kind of fit perfectly. But it couldn't help when I was watching the beginning of season two. I was like, this guy was literally just in love with some other woman. 
And now I'm like made to believe that now he's ready to move on. But I guess she did leave him for another man. You know, things happen and you have to move on, right? So he's ready to take on a new bride. And what I really, I mean, I have, I, I haven't always, but I have enjoyed from time to time, if done well, the I hate you and I hate you, but then they actually end up like having a deep found sexual tension with one another where it's like, but I actually want to be with you because it's kind of nice being with somebody you hate a little bit just a little bit you know that just that 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 tension between the two of them is like why do you hate me so much i hate you because of this and i hate you because of you know there's there's passion there's fiery aggression towards one another and then it leads to something else that's fiery and aggressive which i do enjoy i I think that sometimes i think sometimes a nice little debate or challenge pushback really adds to a relationship just a little bit you know especially at the beginnings of one you know what i'm talking about i guess that's why for for some for some people it's um you know they tease or annoy people you know how like uh the boys like the little kids will annoy the little the little boys will kind of tease and make fun of the the little girls because they actually like them, but they don't know how to say it. You know, stuff like that. I guess that's where it all comes from, sort of. I don't even know. I, I've never done that. But then again, what do I know? I was just a kid. I was just trying to build blocks and whatnot. I wasn't trying to be rude or mean to anybody. And if I was, I would probably, you know, not be like that mean I don't, I don't know but they they hate each other at the beginning well not really i don't think hate's the right word i think it's more of like that essentially kate is trying to cock block my man anthony from getting with edwina because edwina is a perfect match for anthony the roles fit perfectly and he's a he's a he's a great catch she's a beautiful woman who with who he will have great children with and a great uh, family legacy with. But in being a little bit too perfect, she can also be a bit stale. It's not exactly for Antony. Antony likes Kate because she has a lot more... I mean, she's very witty. She she definitely picks on Anthony. She challenges him. She pushes him. She she does a lot of, uh, and they have a lot in common as well. Not that Edwina doesn't, but it's more of like Edwina fits more of a too nice, whereas Kate has a little bit of edge to her. And I like a little bit of edge to her. And I especially like when they when they challenge each other when they're playing that that game that they play. I forget the name of it. Is it uh is it Boach Croquet? I, I forget what it's called. But they they're hitting the the ball with the stick or whatever, right? With the mallet. And that's when they that's when you see that they can they can challenge each other, but they can also have fun, and that they don't care about the the fancy the fancy stuff, right? It's more so about who they are and what they like to do, and their personalities colliding. But it's actually pretty fun, and it's pretty nice to see them laugh and to and to giggle and to have good times together. I also find it it was also kind of. Nice to see Antony um, He was kind of more He was a lot more honest I feel like with Edwina He was trying to like Obviously he's trying to Picture, you know 
give her a picture perfect version of himself. But with Kate, it's a lot more of like his real thoughts and ideas and who he is and what he thinks of and all of those things. You know, he's given her the real and he's showing off like kind of like this perfect man version of who he's of who he is. But that's not who he really is. He's a lot more competitive and he's a lot more uh, argumentative and really out there, pushy a bit. And Kate can handle that. Kate can obviously wit back at him. And that's also true when uh, they go hunting and, and whatnot, right? He thinks he knows best and Kate thinks another way and they end up butting heads and he's like, oh, where's Kate now? I got to go find her. There's this whole dynamic between them that I, I do really enjoy. Now, I do have to say, when it comes to the only thing, well, not the only thing, but a big, I would say a big factor of this show of of Edwina and Antony is that their, their roles in society are what draw them together, right? They should be married because they have good roles together. Because with one another, they can have a, a good family life, right? And if they get married, it's like, it's a, it's a good marriage. It's, a, it's the great marriage. It's a proper marriage. It's as it, as it should be, you know? Why would it why would they marry anybody else? It's like a match made in heaven, the two of them. But that's not true love, right? That's not just because it looks good on paper or like it fits their roles perfectly. It doesn't mean it has to be what they have to it, they don't have to do it. They can do anything they choose. And so it, you you come to understand the two of them the, the positions that they're in. I mean, I guess it also can come down to Kate as well. Kate can't necessarily marry for her family in the same way that Edwina can because Edwina comes from that, uh, that certain bloodline, right? Where she can be uh, an heir to a lot of... She can get a dowry, but only if she marries properly. And Kate can't. And so, you see this burden of sacrifice between Kate and Antony, where it's like Antony had to give up kind of his innocence to become the man of the household when his father dies. And Kate has to give up... She says she gave up eight years of her life to teach Edwina had to be proper so that one day you know she could be in this position where she could marry and because of that what's really important for both of them is their family how to how to best what's it what's it called not show off is represent their families by marrying great um, you know, Antony kind of uh, represents his father's legacy the best way possible. You know, he, he continu continues the family tradition and he does what he's supposed to do because he's the man of the house. And Kate pushes her sister to marry for love and to find a suitable match and somebody who's good for her out of the kindness of her, of her heart and so that she can reap all of the benefits that she stands to gain if she if she does marry well while also wanting her to find true love to real love and that's what's so frustrating about the two of them is that they sacrifice for family and that sacri they even sacrifice each other Antony sacrifices Kate and Kate sacrifices Antony. So much so that it leads to this whole crazy thing where they end up ruining Edwina's and Antony's marriage because of their feelings for each, for each other, like, reveal. There's no way to hide it. 
And just another thing that, you know, my mind keeps on thinking about is the, uh, the B, right? Because I thought it was so funny. I mean, obviously, it's a tragedy, but I was like, what in the world? What was the... I was like, what is the writing team thinking? This guy gets stung... The Anthony's dad gets stung by a bee and he dies? Are you kidding me? Now, I understand allergies are a thing, and maybe if he had a penicillin, he could have survived. But it was back in the day. All right. I don't know how many people I don't know how many people realistically die from bee stings. Hopefully not a lot anymore, but I'm just saying like if you get stung by a bee, I say just walk it off. But not everybody can just walk it off, right? So when when the whole scene was happening with him and Kate and the bee was flying near her, and he was like, "Oh, oh, 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 d- wait, whoa, 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 uh, d- d- hold." Uh, he starts having like a panic attack in front of her, and she's just like, "Whoa, yo, chill, stop, stop freaking out on me, stop freak, you're freaking me out." And she's like, "I'm okay. Look, look, I'm okay." And he's like, "Ah, ah." Uh, uh, uh. She's like, "Look, I'm unharmed." And I'm like, "No, you're not unharmed. You got a, you got stung by a bee." And um, he's, like, freaking out because he's afraid she might die. Like, that's those are the only two times he's ever come encountered with a bee. He's, had a bee. he's been afraid of bees since that day. I mean, he doesn't even drink honey. Not at all. He doesn't put in his tea or nothing. It's all milk. Straight sugar. You know what I mean? So, when that happened, and they kind of had, like, that close-up face-to-face moment, I was like... Oh, this is what they're doing. This is how they're doing it. I was I was smiling the whole time, but I was also like, this is so funny. Like, this could only happen with maybe like a bee sting, I guess. I can't think of another moment. Or like a I can't There's no other bug or like other thing in the world that can kind of like kill a person, I guess. I mean, maybe there there probably is. Like, uh, I saw, like, uh, those bullet ants or whatever. Those bullet ants, like, they, they pack a mean bite. Those ones hurt. But I'm saying, like, a bee, maybe back in the day, there's a higher chance of people dying if you get stung by them. Look, all I'm trying to say is when that scene happened and they had, like, that intimate moment where he was freaking out, I was like, this isn't... This isn't as romantic as I I thought it would be, but it's kind of funny at the same time. It's like, oh, he, she got stung, and she's like, actually, yo, chill, I'm okay. And he's like, okay, yeah, 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 okay. I thought you, I thought you were gonna die. And then when she finds out, she's like, oh, that's crazy, you know, that your dad died from a bee. Yeah, that's nuts. All of this is to say that they they had a lot of great moments, but I f- felt like I was just waiting too long. Like I was like, just get it on already. Just you know, come on for my sake. I was like, uh, how how many episodes do I have to watch for them to finally admit their love for each other, and for them to finally get it on? And it turns out that the that the build up, the wait for it was very much very much worth it i felt i think that when they eventually do you know give in to their desires and their love for we, for one another that it is very it feels right like oh now after everything has happened it feels good to be in a in a perfect place of where they can finally give each other the love that they've been holding in all this time, right? I I, I think about um, Spider-Man 2 in that aspect where it's like when you can't, when you're holding in all of that love inside, it becomes so difficult to balance everything else that's going on in your life, you know? And when you're not honest and open about the truth, then you end up hurting other people that you really love. Like Edwina had to suffer and she got, in so much pain 
but don't cry for Edwina, okay? She it's implied that she gets with the prince of whatever I forget, the one uh, Daphne was gonna marry last season. She gets with him. It's implied. And I'm like, good for Edwina. I'm like, yes, you go be a princess. That's beautiful. I thought that was really that was really genius that they that they were like able to use the prince in that way. Because he didn't marry, apparently. Which is a good thing. So after all of this build up, after all of the time spent looking at the relationship between Anthony and Kate. You can't help but wonder, like, this could have been, it really could have been so easy for the two of them to admit it to the family and just be like, hey, listen, I love her. She loves me. Let's, you know, let's be honest and straightforward. But obviously during the times and complexities of their lives, they feel a, a sense of responsibility, a sense of responsibility to their families to do what they think they have to do, not what they want to do, not what's best for them. And that's kind of the, that's, that's them in the, in old times and in a uh, traditional mentality of the, you know, however far back this is, 1800s or whatnot. But in the end, right? And and I do like to talk I do like happy endings. I do like a lot of it. In the end, you see everybody finally gets a in the final scene of the show, you see everybody go back outside to play the the game and whatnot and everybody has their mallets. Uh I I really I really did enjoy the ending, mainly because it just felt like, you know, after everything, all of the pain and torment that you put people through and all of the, the hardships that you had to deal with and the and the stress of it all and the anxiety and the pressure and the and the pain, in the end there is there is good, you know. I felt like that was a that was a really positive way to leave it. Especially for me. When I saw it I was kind of like finally like they can be at peace and be happy together and married and hopefully have children and be in each other's lives and be everything for each other and for it to be genuine. You know, they, they actually got to be with someone who they truly love. You know, imagine if Anthony did marry Edwina, then everything's ruined. Kate would have to leave. Anthony would have to live knowing that the woman he actually loved is somewhere far away and he can't do anything about it because he's married to the sister. That would be such a shame, such a waste. And for the most part, I, I feel like it's it's kind of... it's uh, He would feel... I think he would feel very alone still had he not found Kate. If it wasn't for Kate, he would be very... If he had married Edwina, I mean, is like he would have felt so alone because, you know, Edwina's great, but Kate's who he really wants. And when you're with somebody you don't genuinely want to be with, then it feels lonely. It feels isolating. It's like you're trapped in something you don't ever want to be trapped in. So... It, it left me feeling happy and like in the end of all of that, all of their faults, all of their wrongdoings, all of their failures to really admit the truth and, and choose to be happy with one another, it all ends up working out in the end for everybody and they can smile and live a good, happy life. And I'm excited to see where where that relationship goes, you know? I'm not sure if, because... Season three is still up in the air. You know, nobody knows exactly what season three is going to be on. I, I think it's going to be like a, a spinoff or like a prequel. Like it's going to be focused on the queen or something, I believe. Like how did the queen marry the king and their relationship and their whole dynamic and whatnot. I feel that that's, that's kind of the, 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 scent, the, the road they're going down for season three. 
but it could also be a continuation of Eloise and uh, the rest of the Bridgerton family and whatnot, all of the other families as well, which I didn't even talk about, but, you know, all of the, the marriages and, and, and everything coming back together again, who knows what's, what's going to happen or what, what it could be. But for me, I just feel like I want more. I need more. I need just a little bit, a little bit more. I want to see more of Antony and Kate, really, and Eloise. And I got to say, I miss the Duke a lot. I really miss the Duke. But hey, if, uh, if he doesn't want to be on the show... Let him let him live on in the season one. Let him live on in season one. I feel like he was really, really good in season one. And you don't want to ruin that. You don't want to take that all away. So, yeah, I'm excited for season three. And I'm excited for any spinoffs or any other uh, renditions of the show that, that are there. I think this is a, this is a fun show. And it's one that... I watch it, and I'm kind of, I'm not overly thinking it too much, I think. Well, sometimes I am. But other times, I can just kind of like, what's going to happen next? Or, or I, I kind of like think about where it's going down, and I like it just a little bit. So in the end, when you're watching Bridgerton Season 2, be ready for a lot of buildup, and then... A sweet, sweet release. That's that's what you should expect. And it is really nice. It's It gives you so much passion and uh, love. But it also is like, it's intermixed with a bunch of, just say it. Just tell the truth already. Why are you letting it drag on this long? And then it's also mixed in with a little bit of, but I understand why you're not doing it, sort of. Especially during that time. Yeah, you have to keep in mind of the time. It's not like now where it's like you could be willy-nilly and do whatever you want. Back then, it was a lot more pressure and high society BS that shouldn't have existed in the first place. But it did, and that's where they are. They're a product of their time. So don't, don't hold that against them. Hold it against the writers. If anybody, if anybody, you hold it against the writers for not giving them more of a chance to, to do what they actually want to do. So yeah. Anyways, guys, thank you guys so much for listening. Thank you so much for subscribing on YouTube. And it means so much to me. Thank you guys so much for listening. I'll see you guys all next time. Thank you.